Okay, it's... Uh... Como! Como! Are we live? Yeah. Huh? We're live, yes. Okay, go. Hey everybody, it's Tuesday. You know what that means? Getting ready for an all new... Carolina, huh? This way, this way. All new Carolina, this way? Yeah, that, yep. All new Carolina Reaper show. Uh, I got some words of advice. Never stare at the sun, okay? I do believe over here we've got. Hey! Oh, well, that feels like Isaiah. I heard Stamos over here. All right, hit the share button. Pretty soon I'll be in Nashville. And then I'll be in Richmond, Virginia, and Myrtle Beach. It's time to get her going. Just kidding, everybody. I was Josh in a two, one. Hey, everybody. Live-ish from Hickory, North Carolina. It's Tuesday night, April the 9th. And you're about to watch an all-new Carolina Reaper show. Real quick, let me tell you about Factor Meals. What I want you to do, and this is a favor to you as well, I'm gonna save you some cash. Head over to factormeals.com slash reapfitty and use the promo code REAP50 to get 50% off your first box plus 20% off your next box. All right, that's code REAP50 at factormills.com slash reap50 to get 50% off your first box plus 20% off your next box while your subscription is active. All right, let's get the show going. What do you say, boys? Let's, yep, yep. let's it. do it. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. What up, peeps? Welcome to Carolina Reaper. It's like a PM magazine from the Carolinas on the crack corn. And today's episode is like a Weird Al Yankovic song about Bonnie Tyler's song. You know what I mean? It's a partial eclipse of our star. Get it? Did you see the eclipse? We'll talk about it. Plus, we're gonna laugh at some idiotic TikToks and I'm gonna give away some real money. Look at all these residual checks. Look at that, tons of residual checks. Somebody's gonna win money tonight. Plus my buddy, Mark Hunt is here. So we're gonna play another round of Goodwill Hunting. It's gonna be a blast, stick around. But first, yes, I'm live right now. Anything could happen, I'm live. See, watch, ow. That hurt. I'm live in the comments section. <laughs> I recorded this yesterday, but right now as you're watching it, I'm live in the comments section, commenting on that. Crazy. Facebook, YouTube, and X and Twitch. Leave me a comment. Talk to me in real time. I want to be interactive with you. All right. Answer me this. Did you watch the eclipse? Where were you? What did you think? Leave it in the comments section. Let me go ask my two pals over here. The guy with the cowboy hat on is my hayseed Gen Z Isaiah. How are you? Doing good. Next to him is a very good looking fellow by the name of Marcus Stamos. How are you, buddy? Total eclipse of the heart. That's what I had today. Yeah. Total eclipse of the heart. You, what does that mean? Well, I didn't get to see it. So your heart was broken. dark and cold and black because you didn't get to see the eclipse. Total ecl well, it wasn't a total eclipse, but eclipse, yeah. Yeah, well, it was a total eclipse for some people, but not for us. Yeah, we were in the, we were too far east, I think. You're too yeah. far east, so. Darn it. Technically, what we got, from what I was told, was like an 85%. Couldn't tell it. Eclipse. Could you? Did it get darker? 
looks looks like it just like, got cloudy to me. It seemed like it got a little bit darker, but not. No. Did you guys go out and put the thing on and look at no. it? No. Mm -mm. Okay. Yeah, it would have been hard to tell had you not done that because, well, number one, it was partly cloudy today, you know, the day of the eclipse. There were clouds in the sky. Right. So you can't, unless you had something to look at it with, you wouldn't have even seen it. But uh, it did, so it just looked like, if you didn't know if today was eclipse, it would just look like a cloudy day. I did look up. I did look out the window and looked up and hurt my eyes yeah. i looked at it they tell you not to look well, you at saw it but i did see here. like something you know blocking the yeah sun well i had two Half pairs light. of sunglasses i had these and then two another light. pair underneath these and i looked up at it and you could see you could see the moon shadow coming up in there mm -hmm. um because i didn't need the two pair of glasses worked yeah so you didn't need to go out and buy a pair of eclipse glasses. Nah, just two pairs. Of what something. are that? What's the difference? Chris, our buddy Chris Fry, who works here, also had the official eclipse glasses, and uh, you can see through the clouds, and you can see the the either the oh. moon or the shadow shadow of the moon. I think it's the moon. Yeah. No, the shadow of the moon is sun. on us, but we're looking at the moon. Yeah. Going in front of the sun. Yeah. So. I wonder it didn't. It's crazy how it doesn't melt, huh? How? What's that? It's pretty crazy how the moon does melt going in front of it. Doesn't like melt. That. Yeah. Yeah. You would think. Yeah. Because with all the direct sunlight. It seems like it's really close to it. Mm hmm. I mean, cheese does melt. That's and what the we were The moon taught. is made out of cheese. cheese. That's all I thought as a kid. Because if you look at it, you can see the little chunks taken out of it, like yeah. the mouse has had a part of it. How does this apply to people who believe that the earth is flat? Or well, how do they factor this in? How do we know that it's not flat? Hmm? Okay, so how does this factor in into your life? <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't. Yeah, I just go with it. Flat, round, uh, yeah. cheese, or rock. <laughs> I'm fine. All right. Well, so you didn't really get to experience it, Isaiah. Did you said you did or did not look at it? I didn't look at it. Yeah, you didn't miss much. There'll be another one. Why didn't in you about look? 40 what were you years? doing not to look at it? I was just inside watching Netflix. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I remember. Uh, I was in L.A. during one eclipse, and I forgot about it, and I got in my car to go get some food or something, and it looked, everything looked like a green tent to me. It looked like, yeah, yeah. And, I did, and I was hoping to see that again this time, but I didn't, I didn't notice anything about it. So, anyway, what was your experience? Were you in the actual zone that was a total eclipse, you know? What all, I wonder what happened today. Like, do you think, like, this affected the economy in, in any way? It could have. You know, I always, I thought, I told a lot of people, this is a perfect time for an attack of some, some kind. Oh, like a terrorist attack? Terrorist attack. Or they could come at us from underneath. Because yeah, yeah, tell we're me looking more. up, right? Okay. So everybody, everybody was looking up today. Everybody's doing this. So you attack from underneath. You, they could have got us from underneath today. Easily. Terrorists left money on the table. Today. Wow. Because your attention's totally... So when you say attack from underneath, you mean like guys walking around just foot sweeping people? Or, or like what's the big attack? Is it just small attacks? The, there's probably like bombs planted over the, when it's dark. Oh, so the, the night before they go ahead and plant a bunch of bombs. Yeah. Like landmines. And then everybody's looking up today so they could have activated them. They're out there walking around. <laughs> Wow, hearts and sparks. I'm glad that they're not as smart as you, the terrorists. Cannot believe they didn't think of it. Maybe the next. When's the next one? The next terrorist attack or next eclipse? eclipse. 2044. There's apparently there's one like what every month somewhere on the Earth. Really? Somewhere on the 2044? Earth. 2044. Maybe in America. Uh, yeah. The guy who uh, we asked to Google things. Perhaps you could Google that. When is the next? Uh, Solar eclipse. Twenty forty. That's twenty more years. So I think it, the last one that happened where we could see it in North Carolina. I was in the sixth grade, and I remember. Yeah. Yeah, I remember that. And I remember uh, having to go out in the courtyard and they had shoe boxes and yeah. stuff, and I remember that. Yeah. But, but I don't know. Twenty forty four. We'll do it again, but we'll probably be in assisted living or something by then. No, by then we'll be we'll be on a spaceship, dude. Oh. That will tour around 
yeah. the sun. Or by then they'll do something to prevent it, maybe. So, yes, it is another 20 years before there's a chance for us to witness a solar eclipse. Chance. Uh, so 72. Chance. Wow. Good luck. Is there anything you want to tell your 72-year-old self? Yeah. Look at the camera and talk to yourself. As at, a, at 72? At, no, how old are you now? 51. A 71-year-old. I want a 51-year-old Marcus to talk to a 71-year-old Marcus and tell him what he should and should not do during this solar eclipse. Oh, during this solar eclipse? Yeah, the next one that's coming. You're, yeah, so we're going to act like it's... Yeah, you're going to talk to the camera like you're talking to yourself yeah. from the past. Uh, don't waste your time. Stay, <laughs> in and, stay in and watch Jeopardy. It's not worth it. I didn't... Perfect. Stay in the nursing home and watch Jeopardy. <laughs> yeah. All righty, let's move on. I like to watch uh, one of the funny things, uh, fun things that me and Jody do to pass the time when I'm on the road. Oh, by the way, if you're in Denver, Colorado, hey, this is the show I was telling you about. We got money to give away here in a minute. Somebody's going to win this check in a little bit. All right, um, but before we get to that, uh, I like to, uh, Jody and I and Mark and some of my friends. I'll see some random thing on TikTok, a reel perhaps, a short, and I'll post it or share it with my friends and go, ha ha, look at this idiot. I like to watch people fall down. So we got a couple of them here that uh, I think I sent to the Alan Jackson. Let's, let's just watch some of these and see what, oh my gosh, before you, this does require sound, but let me set it up real quick. Mark, hmm. you remember how fun it used to be as a kid riding bikes, you know? Yep. Did you ever have that experience? Free as a bird. Riding yeah. around the neighborhood. Ride to, ride to different counties and cities. With your bike yeah. friends and stuff. All right. Um, well, I feel like what you're about to see here is the cool kids are basically bullying or peer pressure. No, it's not bullying. They're peer pressuring the nerdy kid to do something that they know is going to fail. Yeah. And uh, let's just watch this. Go ahead, the Alan Jackson. Oh, go speed, speed, speed! Oh, I'm actually too scared. You, got, scared. No, no, you no. got this. You got this. That was literally perfect. Just keep your speed. You'll oh, go right God. over. Okay. You'll be okay. You got it. You guys are trying to kill him. No, they're not. You got this. He has protection. He's got protection. <laughs> Ready, Carter? <laughs> Reminds me of the goons right. or little rascals. Yeah. Full speed! Full speed. Let's yeah. go, Carter. Okay. Oh, shit! Oh. oh. <laughs> Face plant. Are you good? Carter. <laughs> <laughs> the best part of that video is that kid going, oh, shit. <laughs> you got this. That was literally So, uh, are these speed? kids evil for talking him into it, or do they actually believe that he, he can land yes, safely? Absolutely. There's no. There's no doubt about it. These are evil You're you're 100 percent certain that they talked him into it because they don't yes. like him. Or... Yes. <laughs> he's the nerdy kid with all the equipment. Yeah, he's got all the money. Full all speed. Nice Full speed. Let's go, yes. Carter. Oh shit! Mm. <laughs> he never had a chance. Are you good, Carter? Oh. <laughs> that cry. No. That's horrible. Could you imagine be being like the parents of this kid? Like how mad you would be at the other kids? Yeah. Uh, they, they could have just went ahead and made the jump. They might have. I mean, honestly, it. that jump right there, had he maybe lifted up, up he yeah. didn't pull up. He, he didn't, didn't. He went. He went. He uh, didn't do anything he athletic died. to help himself. Nah. You know what I mean? But they didn't tell him to pull up. Well, maybe they assumed that was. Given information, like you, that's an instinct you should you know should to have. do that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, this one's great too. Uh, I love a good random fall, and uh, especially it's just funnier when it's bigger people who fall. Yeah, it seems to be. And uh, this would fall into that category. Whenever you're ready, the Alan Jackson. Look at them. Hey. Oh, the boy. It was good. They just, you know, played the whole time. All right. Well, um, okay. they played with the birthday present you got Bryce. Oh, wow. <laughs> Tony got his chance. What's up, Bryce? Bryce, next time we'll do it over here. Okay. Tony, what are you wearing? This is Bryce's hockey outfit. It's a little... Oh, okay. He plays hockey. Okay. Like the under... I yep. think it was a bass player. O
Well, that was actually a nice tuck and roll. Yes, it was. How is that even a tuck and roll? Well, I know. Listen, my husband always tells me I, when I wear my Listen crop skirt, they just keep you going. Think, you know how to kind of like, yeah. Yeah. Okay. You feel like yeah. 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 Okay. So, what what he was doing? was, you know how sometimes you just stand in there listening to people talk, and it's a nice day outside, you got your flip-flops on, and you're just kind of playing around, you know, playing with your feet, just kind of doing nothing. But he was on an edge. He was yeah. on the edge of a step, and something got caught. And yeah. when he put his foot back down, it's not where he thought it was going to be. And, and then momentum the, takes yeah. over. Weight carried forward, yeah. <laughs> yes. All right, is this one worth seeing again, or should we just move on to the move next on. one? All right, let's hit the next one, the Alan Jackson. Oh, yeah, I just love this one because of the sound, and it reminded me of uh, me and my buddy Andrew Killian. We used to make Steals. these sound effects. <laughs> now, I don't know what this part at the end is. Someone threw that in there. Transformers. <laughs> uh -oh, okay? Why'd he fall? Okay. What happened? He's on stilts and he lost it. Something bad happened on the stilts. He lost it. But I'm like, the, the Transformers <laughs> noise is what gets me. Uh -oh, okay? <laughs> me and Andrew Killian used to make that Transformer noise all the time. Yeah. All right. Is that all of them? We got one more? One more. Okay. One more. All right, good. I enjoyed it. I can watch these all day. Um, I forgot what this is. Groceries. Oh. oh. And she lost the flip flop. It's, oh, yeah. So shoe flew up. <laughs> <laughs> okay? Face plate. What did she hit? Was it ice or did she trip on something? It's like she is. Oh, she tripped. Ah, she tripped on the uh, <laughs> concrete. A little crack in the concrete. The crack in the concrete got her. Dragging them feet. You got to pick them feet you up. You got to pick your feet yeah. up when you walk. Especially in flip-flops. Don't shuffle your feet in flip-flops and when you're carrying groceries, people. Yeah, that'll break your hip. A lot of people yeah. break hips. Some old people from shuffling. Yeah. Okay, now I forgot what this one was about, but let's give it a shot. I like it because I forget why it's in these. I think, oh, this would be fun to watch when I get back. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> Pinned a snake on his tail, <laughs> on his butt. That guy ran a <laughs> long way. Yeah. Oh, God. Oh, God. <laughs> Holy, Holy fuck. fuck. Are you <laughs> <laughs> Nothing you can do. Everybody falls down. Nothing you can do. Holy But isn't it crazy? Like, when people panic and they're trying to run away as fast as they can, they always end up falling down. Except for this guy, I guess. <laughs> and it took him a long time. He didn't fall down. down. Everybody else fell down. That's so great. So what is that? Are they just, it's a clip on? Yeah. Oh my God. Look at him. All right. All right, that's fun. Did you say there's one more, Alan, or is that it? Uh, no, that was it. Okay, good. Well, that was fun. I enjoy watching idiotic TikTok. All right. So hey to everybody in Denver. Thank you for coming out and packing the house. My apologies to people. Uh, who were turned away at the door? Remember, you have it's best to buy in advance so that you will have a, a ticket. Some people try and do last minute stuff and then it's sold out. And uh, thank you for uh, the Comedy Works for having me and for adding that, that extra show that we had to add because uh, the demand was so great. So thank you all. All right, let's get into basketball. As everyone knows, I was rooting for the Wolf Pack of North Carolina State, my team, my alma mater. Uh, sadly, we lost to uh, Purdue. Purdue, and our women's team lost as well. But what a great, what a great run it was! <laughs> Proud of you guys for making it that far. And I gotta say, and Mark, you already know this about me. I don't care about basketball. 
And I wasn't even watching uh, NC State this season. This season. Because they weren't doing well. Until they, until they started winning. Until they started winning. It's not a real fan. Oh, I don't have to be a real fan. I'm an alumni. I'm a gold, gold tier level. But why did you not gold watch them? Gold surpasses. Until, why don't you watch them in the good times and in the bad times? Well, I don't care about basketball. I watch football. Huh. Yeah. But being a gold level member <laughs> allows me Your to gold do, level. Yeah. You don't, we're going to get into that. Yeah. Let's get into that. Because that's what everybody wants to get to. Let's get it right into it. The bylaws and mandates, um, basically what, what I've come up with. I touched on it a little bit last week. Now, what Alan has pulled up here, there's a website, too. It's just so you know, there's a website called the NCAA Rules for Rooting. This is the uh, first draft. There's a second draft, which is not up here. So, Alan, you this actually you, This is actually the second draft. Did you update it? updated it. Oh, very good. So this is the... Uh, updated ver version of the rules and regulations on rooting in co college athletics. And then uh, you don't have the ranking system in there, do you? Uh -huh. I do. Let me just take a look at it. Oh, there we go. So which, 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 which should I cover first, uh, Mark? Would you like to know about the ranking system? What's the gold tier? Because you, you said you were gold, I'm gold. tier. Okay. Yeah. What is that? Let's scroll up a little bit there, Alan. Yeah, here we go. Gold tier, that is level four. That is alumni, professors, boosters, military, and faculty and staff of the college or university that you went to. That's just the gold tier. Just gold. Okay, so I'm right I can go higher. You what? can't. I... Other people can. Why? Okay, well, let's see what platinum is. Go ahead to the very top. Yeah, platinum very, elite. The is top what I tier. Yeah, I'll, make, I'll just start from the top and we'll work our way down. The highest you'll ever be is platinum elite. Okay, and that are the athletes and the coaching staff that that uh, at a university. So if you're actually playing the game, you are the most important because you're the athlete playing the game. Everything should is according to you. I mean, if you're the one coaching or playing the game, it doesn't get higher than you. You are the best. You are platinum elite. No one can beat you. Your opinion matters more than anybody's opinion because you're in it. Does that make sense? Makes would, sense. Would you agree with that? I'll agree with that, but I'm looking down at platinum tier. Let me get okay. to, yeah, we'll get, Mark is fast forwarded. He's yep. ready for the next one. I got a question about this one. Just underneath that is platinum. Now, that would be the immediate family, and I am including step family, who live within the same domicile. That's the immediate family and step family of any of those athletes and coaching staff. Oh. That Somebody that lives with a player. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, like the immediate that, family. That lives with a player or an ex-player. If it's family. It can't be a girlfriend. Oh, oh okay. It can't be a boyfriend. It's got to be family. Now, immediate family, do you, do, can we all agree about what immediate family is? Immediate family is the parents or the kids, uh, and that's it, right? Brothers and sisters. So the parents of an athlete, if that athlete has kids, or brothers and sisters. Not grandparents, not grandkids. So, Alan, let me ask you. The, the actual definition of immediate family, that does not include grandparents, does it? So we discussed this at, 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 in great detail, and I think we came up with the conclusion that immediate family would not include grandparents. Correct. Or aunts and uncles or nephews, nieces. Correct. It is spouse, children. That's it, right? Spouse, children, brothers, and sisters. Oh, yeah, your brothers and sisters. Well... Yeah, yeah, and your parent, your parents. Yeah, but not your grandparents. So immediate family is what happens immediately to you, and so that's immediately yeah. is your mom and your dad. That's it. Or if you have a kid, that's immediate. That's your kids and your brother and sister that grew up with you is also immediate. Everything outside of that is not immediate family. But I am including step family. Okay, so know that. So so far, Mark, I am none of these. Nor will I ever be. I will never be a platinum tier unless, unless my son, Tucker or Tate or uh, Laney, end up playing 
professional or college athletics, which I don't foresee happening. So I, it's safe to say that you and I will never be a platinum elite or platinum tier member. All right, next level down, diamond tier. That is any and all students currently enrolled at a college university. Now, the reason why I'm saying students are diamond level is because at the end of the day, what is a college or a university? It's an institution of higher learning. Its sole purpose, primary purpose, is to educate <clears throat> kids out of high school, all right? So I'm giving you diamond level because you're there, you're doing it, you're the day-to-day, -day, you're the main reason why a college exists, so I'm giving you a diamond status. So far, Mark, I'm not, I'm not either of those. I used to be a diamond status, but I'm no longer diamond status. Do you really feel like you need to have this many statuses? Yes. There's a lot. Yeah. yeah you could probably narrow this down to three, four, maybe. I will accept any input after we go through the whole thing. Thank you. All right, so now we move on to gold tier, gold status. And as I said earlier, I am gold status. Alan Jackson is gold status. Uh, Moose would be gold status if we were talking about Lenore Ryan University. Um, it depends on, you know, if you went to a school and you graduated, your alumni of that school makes you a gold status. So I'm gold of NC State. Uh, gold, again, is alumni, professors, boosters, boosters. Now, here's a new one. I, I added boosters in the second draft because boosters, you, you may not have went to that school. You may not have graduated from that school. But I'm, I'm going to give you gold status because you're, you're doing a lot. You're giving money. You're raising money. There's lots of things you can do to be a booster, okay? And I'm also doing military because, hey, you served our country. Uh, you made the sacrifice. I'm going to put you in at gold, uh, even if you didn't go there, all right? And that's uh, military, faculty, staff, yada, yada. Now, below gold is silver, and that is the immediate family, including step family, of the students, alumni, faculty, staff, of a university, immediate family of those people. Then below that, bronze tier, that's everybody else, all <laughs> other civilians. I think there's gonna be a lot of bronze tier people. Lot, there's a, it's mostly bronze tier out there. Yeah, yeah. I would be bronze tier. You would be bronze, I'm trying to think of where I could put you in here. Um, um, well, you might be, depending on what the school is. I've got right? a son that went to college, so I'd be so a, you, uh, wait, wait. Say it again. I have a son that went to college. He's at App State. Yeah. Okay. Graduated. All right. So already. that means you are immediate family of a diamond. So scroll back up there, uh, Alan. I want to see where we can put Mark of, of App State. You would be uh, silver. You would be silver of App State. Yeah. Right. Which means you could tell anybody uh, uh, below you, yeah. bronze and lower, what to do about App State. So if I get a silver tier t-shirt, everybody's gonna know what that means. Oh, a t-shirt that says silver? Yeah, silver tier. So I think that's something I think you need to- I think we got some merch. Yeah, you need to get get that out there. I like that. The team, and then what tier you fall under. And then I that's, like that. That's where you sit in bleachers too, right? I think that you can <laughs> do a lot with that. it. Yeah. That's you a good amendment. You shouldn't be allowed to sit in a certain area if you're just a bronze tier member. Be up there. Yeah. I don't mind. I don't mind this. Okay, Bronze yeah. up with the nosebleed. I've got you gave you some homework. Yeah. All right. Now let's go back up to the actual rules. Okay. Now these are the, uh, you know, I'm calling them rules and regulations on rooting because I like the alliteration of the R word rules, regulations, rooting. Um, but some of these aren't really rules. They're more of like, it's a, it's a guide. It's a guide. It's, it's like, a, it's suggestions, right? So rule number one, and I'm going to dumb this down for you guys because this is, uh, did you put this in the, oh, this is, all right, this is, all right, thank you, Alan, sorry. Rule number one, be true to your school, pretty self-explanatory. Ideally, you should really just root for the team of the school that you went to. Uh, that's pretty basic, um, but there is a playoff exemption. For example, one is allowed to root for any other university outside of their university only if their university has been eliminated from the playoffs or the championship rounds. For example, and I'll even update the example, UNC student 
DJ Horn is now al allowed to root for UConn because his team has been eliminated. So once your team is no longer in it, we're not going to make you stop watching the sport altogether, right? You're still allowed to mm -hmm. watch it and root, but you, you can't root for your team because they're not in it. So there you go. That's rule number one. Basically, be true to your school. Now, I want to sum something up real quick. There's been a lot of confusion on the rules. I'm getting a lot of negative feedback on Twitter, X, and it's because they're not reading the rules properly. They're not understanding the rules, which is probably your, your bronze tier people who aren't that educated <laughs> or just don't like exactly reading. Exactly. That's it is. fine. Yep. I'm going to sum it up for you. All right. This is the easiest way you can understand it because I get this a lot. John, you can't tell me who to root for. I can root for whoever I want to. You can't tell me who to root for. If I want to root for this team, I'll root for them team. Your rules are stupid. I'll root for whoever I want to. And I, you could always do that. It never says in here you can't root or cheer for anybody. You can root and you can cheer for any team you want, no matter who you are. But depending on your level, will allow you certain privileges beyond that. For example, you're not allowed to brag and you're not allowed to talk trash if you didn't go to that school, right? And you're not allowed to use the pronoun we when referring to the team. You can't say, oh man, we had a good game yesterday. We? You didn't go to that school. You can't use we. And I like this one. That's going to be hard to enforce and I do get blowback on this. You can only wear the gear, the hats, the t-shirts that say the school on it. You can only wear that within a 24-hour period of any given game. Otherwise, I look at it as stolen valor. And you know what stolen valor is. That's when someone dresses up to be something they're not. Like, it happens in the military a lot. Some guy will put on an outfit of a, a, a four-star general of the military walking around trying to get praise for being in the military when he was never in the military. I feel the same way about people who did or did not attend a college. Now, if you're at the game and you're wearing the hat, that's one thing. But if you're out here walking around in public wearing Tar Heel gear, trying to make me think you went there, shame, shame, shame. Okay. <laughs> All right. Let's go through the rules real quick. Rule number one, be true to your school. Rule number two, jurisdiction, territory. Real simple. How now this rules? one. How many rules have you got? Uh, let's see here. How many we got there, Alan? We now have six rules. Okay. I'm not going to read all of them. I'm just going to give you the headlines. Okay. So far, do you have a problem with this? All you, of it. You had problems yeah, earlier. Yeah, yeah. Let's just get to that so I don't. I no, don't go lose through your you. rules first. I know you're we'll, bored. we'll circle back to me. Okay. Rule number two, jurisdiction and territory. Now, th this should be a good thing for a lot of people, right? Because if you happen to live in a state that doesn't have a professional team, like Alabama does not have an NBA team, they don't have an NFL team, and that, that's not their fault. They shouldn't be punished for that. So if you grew up in Alabama, you're allowed to root for any college you want to because they don't have a professional team. So good on you. That's a, a, a rule two, jurisdiction and territory. Now, rule number three, and I basically just went over this, but this is, this is, this is that again, unaffiliated or non-collegiate fans, okay? If one did not attend any college or university, it is preferred that one only root for the professional team within that state. And here's why I'm saying that. Professional teams are open for the public. That's open to everybody. You know, they represent the state or the city that they're in. It's not a university. It's not, a, it's not for students. It's, it's for everybody. So that's how you should look at it, right? However, if you don't want to follow that rule and you simply must root for a university or a college, you are forbidden in partaking of bragging, trash talking. You can only wear the gear within a 24-hour grace period of any given game. Otherwise, it's called stolen valor. One must knoweth thy role and stayeth within thy lane. Very simple. Now, 
Number four, pronoun usage. We went over this. You're only allowed to use the word we, the pronoun we, if you happen to be silver or up. Okay, that would include me. Mark would not be allowed to say uh, when referring to when referring to the Carolina. You can't say or even we had a. Can, oh, you can say we I because say you have we, a son that goes okay, there. Okay, thank you. But not Carolina. You're welcome. Yep, you're welcome. <laughs> now there's there's an exemption to this. That's the boosters exemption. Boosters are allowed to brag, talk trash, wear the gear, and use the pronoun we. Now what is a booster? You're a booster if a you have ever participated in college athletics, B, you have made financial contributions to the athletic programs, C, you have been asked by athletic department staff to assist in, uh, in recruiting, D, you have assisted or are providing benefits like summer jobs and occasional family meals uh, to student athletes, or E, you have otherwise, and this is the loophole that you should like, E, you have otherwise been involved in promoting college athletics in any way. So in a weird way, if, if I were a smart bronze person, I'd be like, according to your rules, John, I can do anything because I'm a booster. I'm like, what do you mean? Booster exemption E, I have promoted college athletics anytime I buy a shirt or a hat. Yep. Now, aren't you happy I let you... Uh, I made you aware of that? Yes, sir. I'm <laughs> here. Okay. Ah. Two more rules real quick. Age requirements. Now, I did this for Kobo. Although he's, how old are you now? 19 now. 19, so this doesn't even apply to you anymore. Um, anyone under the age of 18 is allowed to root for any team of their choosing because they still have the potential to one day end up at that university. It's preferred you root for a school within your own state, though. Example. Uh, Nine-year-old little Tommy can root for the Tar Heels because he is not yet of college age. He's allowed to root for any team he wants up until the age of 18. Then when he eventually graduates high school, applies to UNC, and gets rejected, he must now rethink his life and revisit rule number one and or two. Okay. Now there's an uh, exemption to this. It's called the uh, limited mental capacity exemption. It is acceptable for anyone to root for a university outside of their home state or any university of their choosing, no matter their age, if one has been diagnosed with a mental illness. Okay? It's not their fault. That's for example, nice of you to do that. It's like yeah. uh, kind of like having a handicap sticker. Exactly. My cousin Kenneth, may he rest in peace. I love Kenneth. He was mentally capacitated. Loved Carolina his whole life. I'm not going to take that away from him. <laughs> it's not his fault. Yeah. All right, rule number six, military. I have m much love for all military people. So here is that rule. Any and all current or former members of the military are allowed to root for any team of their choosing, although it is encouraged that they first root for the team of the branch of military in which they served. Like, for example, there's an Army-Navy football game, you know. Really, you should be rooting for those guys. But... You're allowed to go outside of that uh, because you are military, and we appreciate it. It is not required that you do that. Also, they can wear the gear anytime they want, and they can brag. But they should refrain from trash talking and using the pronoun we. Still can't use the word we. Even Technically, no, unless they're referring to Army, Army Navy, or Navy. Yeah. yeah. Okay, that's well, it. I hope I cleared it up. Any questions, guys? Anybody in the booth have questions? Isaiah, did you understand this? Yes, sir. Okay. <laughs> I got, what gives you the right mm. to come up with rules for us to follow? What, what makes you think that right. you are the rule uh, maker? My the goal. clock watcher, as you would say. That is a good question, Marcus. Oh. This That's right all, here. huh? That's all you need to say. And it doesn't matter what the degree is. The fact that it is a degree and the fact that I got it. That's all you need to know. Okay? <laughs> Why is he flexing so hard about a communications degree? Well, I'm using it. <laughs> Made a lot of money with that thing. So, yeah. That's why. Um, 
What else? What else? We did the eclipse. Oh, I got to post this. No, I'll do it in the break. Um, any other questions? What gives me the right to do it? That, yeah. I think that answered it. Coble, you got any questions? Well, we, we do have one question back here. Actually, yes. it's for Coble. Please. Um, so Coble has informed us that he took a, a class, a single class at North Carolina State University. Okay. He took the, one class at NC State. Yes. Maybe All right. Like that means what, you paid tuition. Mm -hmm. it was about, a year last year. about a year ago, he paid tuition. Okay. Where does that fall on the classifications? What are you currently taking else? Uh, aren't you enrolled somewhere else as well? I graduated somewhere else. Graduated where? At UC Berkeley. Yeah, he graduated UC Berkeley. Um, the rules say that attend the school, not doesn't say graduate. Right, it's the rules. If you've ever paid a tuition, you are diamond or, or, or alumni status. Even if he took like a welding class or something? No kind yeah. of state? Yeah, yeah. Because oh. you paid you paid money into it, that could also be seen as a booster in a weird way. Because you're you're paying into it. So you're saying that Coble is equally prepared to pull for and root for NC State and UC Berkeley and Berkeley. So it does not count. It does not matter if he does not actually finish graduating from that's a right. particular school. That's right. You have equal terrain, or equal usage of State and Berkeley. And I want to add, you are. I want to say you might be silver at UNC. Doesn't your immediate family, didn't someone in your immediate family go to Carolina? Uh, for a brief time, yes. Okay, for but they paid time, money. Yes. They paid the tuition. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, well, then that would, that would lump you in. the. Uh, I, I believe that might make you silver with, you in, with the Tar Heels. But you're, above, but you're gold with Berkeley. You know what I mean? That's a lot of things for you. You have a lot of options. Thank you. You, yeah, he's he, he, he's a pretty, very appreciative back Those here. are the rules. Thank you. Yeah. So there's an order to things. Now, why did I come up with this? Is that what you asked? Yeah, I did. Why, why did I come it? up with this? I'll tell you why I came up with this, Isaiah. Wrong hat. Um, when I'm walking around, before this basketball season, this happened a couple of years ago. I'll put an NC State hat on and I'll just be walking around out in public somewhere in Hickory. And someone will come up to me and go, boo. I'm like, what? State sucks. I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm wearing a state hat. Oh, well, you don't like state? Like, no, I like Carolina. I go, oh, okay. So uh, you must have went to Carolina. When did you graduate Carolina? They'll be like, oh, no, I didn't go there. And I get to go, I know you didn't. Because you're a dumb person. I went to NC State. My opinion and my love trumps your random fandom. Okay? It means something to someone who went there. It means less to you who just jumped on the bandwagon because your mama liked them. Okay? So just know your place. Knoweth thy role. It's very simple. And I, that would apply, too, if I were, uh, just to say the roles are reversed. Let's say I went to Carolina, and I'm wearing a Carolina hat. And some guy came up to me and went, boo, Carolina sucks. And I go, oh, who do you like? They go, Duke, I'm a Duke fan. Then I could go, did you go to Duke? And they go, no. I would say the exact same thing. Do you understand? I'm not just saying it because I'm a state person. I'm saying it because I'm a gold-level person. Okay. We got to take a break, yes? Yes. All right. I'm going to read the comments when we come back from the break. Sounds good. All right. Don't go anywhere. Don't you shut your papers. We'll be right back with more Carolina Reaper. <laughs> hey there, John Reap here. Did you know that I have over half a million followers across all my social media? Yes, that's a little bit of a humble brag, but... It's true. If you add them all up, Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, Twitch, all of it, over half a million. And I'm here to tell you something. I'm open for business. <laughs> That's right. So if you have a product, you know, a business, an organization, something that you want to sell, holler at me. Let's do this. All you got to do is go to my website, carolinareaper.com. Hit advertise and uh, Let's get your business all up in my business, right? 
Let's get to work. Hey everybody, John Reap here, and I am at the Hickory Station Restaurant and Bar right here in Hickory, North Carolina. They've got great food, great beer, and they got my barbecue sauce. Come on, I'll show you. John Reap's Hickory Smokehouse South In Your Mouth Barbecue Sauce. Yeah, baby. So good, it'll make your head shake. Now watch. <laughs> Let's go see how much people are loving my barbecue sauce. Ah, hey guys, how we doing over here? Good, you? you enjoying the barbecue sauce? Oh man, it's really good. <laughs> All right, chicken wings. You gotta try my barbecue sauce, Let's man. See. This is the best thing I've had my mouth broke. Hey, have you tried my sauce? You know I'm having dessert. Ah, it's great on cheesecake. Wow, that's amazing. Hey, have you had my sauce? We're just drinking, man. You can drink it. Not bad. <laughs> John Reeves, South in Your Mouth Barbecue Sauce. So good it'll make your head shake. I told you. All right, we are back. All right, everybody, listen, I got a very, very serious question for you. Do you like to eat? Do you like to eat good food that tastes great? You know I do. You gotta try Factor Meals, baby, all right? You can eat stress-free this spring with Factor's delicious, ready-to-eat meals. Every fresh, never-frozen meal is chef-crafted and dietitian approved and ready to eat in just two minutes. And you can choose from a weekly menu of 35 different options, including popular options like Calorie Smart, Keto, Protein Plus, or Vegan and Veggie. You can also discover more than 60 add-ons every week, like breakfast, on-the-go uh, on lunch, snacks, and beverages to help you stay fueled and feel great all day long. So what are you waiting for? Get started today and fuel up for your springtime goals. I mean, it's, it's amazing. It's chef prepared meals on your table in two minutes with factors ready to eat meals. So you can get back to doing what you love this spring. And I'm talking really good meals, not your, not your dumb, uh, uh, you know, microwavable TV tray stuff from the sixties and seventies or eighties. I'm talking gourmet meals. It's really good. Try meals that feature premium ingredients like filet mignon, shrimp, Truffle butter, broccolini, and asparagus. Mwah! No fuss, no mess meals. Factor meals eliminate the hassle of preparing, cooking, or cleaning up. It's, it's so simple. So all you got to do is heat it up and enjoy it. All right? If so you got a busy schedule, this is perfect for you. Factor is your solution for fast, premium meals without the need for cooking. All right, Jody and I, we love it. We do it, and it's the best, because we never have to argue about where to eat. We're going to eat at home. And then it's like, well, what are we going to eat? What's your food mood? Well, I want Mexican. Well, I want this. You can eat whatever you want. It's all planned out for us. right? I like to do the keto meals. She likes to do the calorie smart one. And we don't have to clean any mess. We don't have to dirty up a dish. We just use the fork and a little salt and pepper. It's, it's awesome. So, if you want to take advantage of this and use my promo code, I'm going to save you 50%. All you got to do is head over to factormeals.com slash REAP50 and use the promo code REAP50 to get 50% off your first box plus 20% off your next box. That is code REAP50 at factormills.com slash reap50 to get 50% off your first box plus 20% off your next box while your subscription is active. All right, I'm hungry now. 
Let's read some comments from last week. Last week I said, have you seen the nude Roadhouse movie? What did you think? Shane Flint said, it's always hard to beat the original. This is true. Like uh, he also said, Michael Keaton Batman was the best. Um, I can't disagree with that because it was the first of the good ones and it was fantastic, but Christian Bale is so good too. I don't know. Something about Keaton's was better in my opinion. So I agree with you, Shane. Uh, Daryl Young. He said, I was a bouncer and a doorman at several large bars and clubs and did that to pay for my training as a medic firefighter. And I loved Roadhouse. We would watch it in the station. He loved the old Roadhouse, I'm guessing. Daryl, did you see the new one? And what are your thoughts? Uh, Michael Hamrick did not like the new Roadhouse. Yes, a lot of people. What I'm discovering now, Isaiah, is a lot of people dislike it or they're okay with it. I don't get a whole lot of, I loved it. I get people saying, it was pretty good or it was horrible. And I'm in the, it's pretty good camp. You know, have you seen the new one? No, but okay. I like Conor McGregor and I like Jake Gyllenhaal. So uh, I want you to watch it and let me know what you think. I'll All let right. you use my prime account. All righty. I'll check it All out. Right. Uh, Diana Dollar. She goes, LOL woke house. Please do. Yeah, I joked around and said they should call it Woke House because there was a little bit of wokeness in there, but not so much that it distracted me 100%. Just tiny little things here and there. What was, <clears throat> like, what was in the movie that made it woke? Just the, a lot of the, the, the casting. Gotcha. Uh, the first Roadhouse was all white people. Gotcha. This one is not all white people. So... One could argue it's a little bit woke or DEI-ish. But like I said, it didn't bother me. It's just different, just what we are today. So um, Shane Flint, he said, if NC State wins the NCAA championship, is the John Reap shuffle going to be modified? Shane, we'll never know. <sighs> Sadly, we'll never know, Shane. It was not going to be modified had we won. It may have been elaborated and extended, but... Maybe I should, Shane. That's a good, now that you bring it up, maybe I should go ahead and make it a, an entire dance outside the shuffle. Like the shuffle leads into something else and then goes, I'll figure it out. Uh, Johnny Moxon, that guy banging <laughs> Ariel Grande is a theater major. He's doing pretty dang good. All right, well, I think you meant to say Ariana Grande. And I know what he's talking about. Have you heard about this, Isaiah? No, I haven't. Both, you guys know what, what this is in re reference to? Anybody back there? Nope. Okay. No. We all know who Ariana Grande is. Yes, yes sir. Okay. Really? I think she's in a new movie. Uh, is it about uh, Wizard of Oz? Uh, the prequel to it. Wicked. Wicked. I believe she's in Wicked. And one of her co-stars is a red-headed ginger actor. And he was married. And he left his wife to hook up with Ariana Grande, which is not good. But I think Johnny is trying to say, hey, theater majors can do good sometimes. Ginger ones. I got my own Ariana Grande. Her name is Jody, and I love her very much. How dare you? Okay, let's move on. I want to introduce y'all to somebody. Yeah, sitting right here, snuck in on us. Dr. J. Moore, not the one from Saturday Night Live. This J. Moore is all about uniform life and retirement. Um, tell us real quick about your podcast and what you talk about on there. Thanks, John. My podcast at Uniform Life and Retirement, we talk about uh, the policies that we have with Transamerica, specifically the living benefits, because oh. Unlike a lot of life insurance companies and plans, they just cover if somebody dies. You can actually be living and still benefit from your life insurance policy with what I have at Transamerica. Oh. Covers illnesses such as cancer, heart attack, stroke, ALS, to name a few of the many illnesses that it covers. Based on how severe that case is, a client could withdraw up to 90% of their coverage amount without having to pass. Wow. Which is pretty unique in this day and time because we got so many folks that are being diagnosed 
with cancer and heart attack and stroke, for example, and they're living through it. Wow. Yeah. Can I come on your podcast? Would well, love to have you on there, John. I want to do an episode of your podcast, and I want to talk about my situation. I feel like my dad could have really benefited from that. He had a stroke and lived for six years afterwards, but we could have used some of that that money. I'd love to have you on there, John. It'd be right. an honor. So where can people find this podcast? Anywhere you get a podcast. Apple, Podbean, Stitcher, it's all there. And it is called Unifor Life and Retirement Podcast. All right. Thank you, Dr. J. Thank you, John. Appreciate it. All righty. And I say we give some money away. What do you say, Isaiah? Let's do it. Look at all these residual checks. I think I have 17 of them on here, and we were having some difficulty earlier within the show. Apologies for that. So we're going to play the game differently today, okay? What we're going to do is reward everybody who called in. Normally, I only take three phone calls, and I make those people guess the amount of one check. But this time, because everyone was on hold for a long time, and because I got a lot of checks, everyone's going to have a chance to win either a check or a prize from the mystery bag of merchandise. Alrighty. It is a game that we like to call... How Much Is That Screen Actors Guild Residual? Okie dokie, the Alan Jackson. Whenever you're ready, you can start at the top and we'll work our way down. First caller, let him on in here. All right, here we go. All right, hey there, if you can hear my voice, tell me your name. Hey, John, my name's Tip. Your name is Tip? Chip, C H I P. Oh, Chip. Like potato chip. Yeah, like a potato chip. All right, Chip, I see your yeah. 828 area code. Where are you calling in from? I'm calling from Mars Hill, Mars North Carolina. Mars Hill. All right, Chip. Well, we got 17 yeah, checks. west of Asheville. Gotcha. All right, Chip. Give me a number between 1 and 17. 15. All right. Ready? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. All right. We have your check. Check number 15 is right here. Okay. Chip from Mars Hill, you're going to be playing against intern Isaiah. And this check is for one episode of East Bound and Down on HBO. It's electronic sell-through only. Now, Chip, before I even give you the amount of this check, would you like to just forfeit the check and get something from the mystery bag of merchandise? Or do you actually want to play the game for the check? No, nah, I'll play for the check. All righty. I love that show. So. Me too. Uh, all right, Isaiah. <laughs> How much is this check, Isaiah? $2.50. $2.50, says Isaiah. Chip, what say you? Uh, I'm going to go $27. $27. Well, the actual amount of this check is $1.77. Isaiah won the game, which means I get to keep the check, but you win something from the mystery bag of merchandise. Okay, Chip? That's fantastic, man. Now, I need your address. And to do that, and this, this goes for everybody, uh, at some point, you're going to have to go to carolinareaper.com, click on contact, and then tell me your name and uh, give me your address and tell me what you won. You know, like, for example, Chip okay. just won uh, an, an item from the merchandise bag. And then I need your address, okay. and I'll send this to you. Okay, Chip? Fantastic, man. All right. Well, thanks for calling in. All right. Hang up on them, Alan. Let's go to the next person. All righty. Let's see what we got here. Is it another 828? No, we're going to a 540 area code. I cannot wait to talk to this on the person. Line. All right. If you can hear my voice, tell me your name. 
Hi, John. My name is Samantha. Samantha. Is this Samantha Dawn Kingston? It absolutely is, darling. Oh, it's so good to hear your voice again. How you doing? Doing good. Good. Thank you for my birthday card. And uh, Sebastian and Stamos also wanted me to thank you for their card. And I got your message about Richmond, Virginia. You get in for free. You and uh, three of your friends. Okay? All right. All right. Pick a number between 1 and 16. Good old 13. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. All right. Let's open this check and let's see what will Samantha be playing with. Will she win money or will she win a item from the mystery bag of merchandise? Oh, here we go. It's another one from Eastbound and Down. Chapter 23, this one is for pay television. Isaiah, how much is this check? $8.24. $8.24. Samantha? $2.75. The actual amount of this check is $5.69, which puts Isaiah closer so Isaiah wins the check, but that means Samantha gets an item from the mystery bag of merchandise. How about that, Samantha? I do believe I have your address, but it would help me if you would just send me a message through Carolina Reaper with your address as well. Huh. Huh. All right, honey. No problem. Look at me. Don't look that way. Look at me. All right. Thank you, Samantha. All right. Any questions, Samantha? No, sir. Alrighty. Hope you're doing well. Can't wait to see you in Richmond. All right. Okay. The Ellen Jackson. You can hang up on her and just head on down to the next one. Uh, the next caller with a 315 area code. On the line. John Reap here. If you can hear me, Hi. tell me your name. Hi, my name's Kat. Your name is what? Kat, K-A-T. Oh, cat, like the cat, like, like the animal. Yes. All right, Kat. Where are you calling in from? Syracuse. Syracuse, New York. Wow. Thanks for calling yeah. in. Um, okay. So uh, pick a number between 1 <coughs> and 14. Let's do 8. Since it's the 8. Caller number 8. Okay. Yeah. Check number 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, Eight. Okay. Got your check right here. I'm going to open it for you. And let's see if you can beat Isaiah. See if All your right. guess is better than Isaiah's guess. All right. This is for another one. Eastbound and down on HBO. This is chapter 25, not 23, 25. Amazing. And it is for the electronic sell through market. So, Isaiah, how much is this check? Three dollars and seventy-five cent. Okay, cat. How much is this check? Two dollars and thirteen cents. Whoa! Holy crap! Her guess was very what? good. What? This check is for two dollars and forty-three cents. Kat, you are the first person to win a check tonight. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you so much. Now, you know what to do, right? Um, go to Carolina Reaper and enter it. Right. Go to Carolina Reaper, hit contact, send me an email through the website with your address and the amount of your check, and I will, I will send this to you. It was, it was $2.41? Is that correct? Yeah. Two dollars and forty three uh, cents. So two dollars and forty three uh. cents. <laughs> All right. I wish I'd have, you know what? I want another chance to hang out with you again in Syracuse is what I want. We had so much fun. Well, every time I'm in Syracuse, I always I love hanging out the funny bone and there's always a bar right there in that <laughs> mall. Anybody that's there that's can come hang out with me. Thank you so much, uh, Kat. Thank you. Appreciate you. Have a great day. You too. All right, Alan Jackson, hang up on Cat. We got uh, three more. All right. Next one's coming in the room. Right? All right. 
Looks yeah. like we got another 828 in the room. Uh, if you can hear my voice, tell me your name. My name is Susan. Susan, where are you calling in from? I'm calling from Hickory. Hickory, that's, I know where that is. That's right down the road. All I know. right. Our, your dad and my mom went to school together. They no were way. Classmates. Small Yes world. way. Well, um, yes. Susan, give me a number between one and 14. Um, seven. Seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Got your check right here. I'm going to open your check right here. And let's see what this is for. This is for, wow, here we go. Eastbound and down again, chapter 25, but this time it's for pay television. Isaiah, how much is this check? $4.67. Susan, how much is this check? I'm going to do, um, I'm going to play the prices right and say four sixty eight. <laughs> and what did you say? Four sixty seven. Good strategy, Susan. You guessed one penny over Isaiah, and the actual amount of this check is $7.95. Congratulations. You win the check. You know what to do, Susan. Go to carolinareaper.com, click on contact, tell me the amount of the check that you just won, and your address, and I'll mail it to you, okay? And it was $7.00 and... Seven dollars and ninety-five cents. Ooh, congrats! Very exciting. Yeah, you get Thank half you. a cheeseburger. All righty. I'm excited. Thank you so much, Susan. All right, the Ellen Jackson. We got two more calls. Let's go ahead and move on to the next caller, and uh, let's see who in the room. All right, hey there. If you can hear my voice, tell me your name. My name is Josh. Josh, where are you calling in from? Oh, right down the road from me in Hickory. All right, another Hickory person. What do you do for a living, Josh? Um, take care of my wife and kids, and they take care of me. <laughs> Very I used good. to make your pizza a long time ago. What's that? I used to make your pizzas a long time ago. My pizza? Yes, sir. Where? Down at Papa John's in Newton. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I love Papa John's. Okay, buddy, pick a number between 1 and 13. Number 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. Got your check right here. I'm going to open it right now on the show in front of you and Isaiah and anybody who's watching. And here we are. Guess what? Eastbound and Down, Chapter 22, Pay Television. Isaiah, how much is this check? Ten dollars and eighty-three cent. Okay, how about you, buddy? Eight dollars and six cent. Yours was closer, my friend. The actual check is four dollars and fifty-four cents. So, congrats! Thank you. you beat Isaiah. You win the check fair and square. Make sure to go to CarolinaReaper.com. Click on contact. Give me your name, the check amount, and your address, and I will mail it to you. Okay, buddy? One last thing. Yes, sir. Last thing got to hear me in it? You about to find out! <laughs> All right. Hang up all on, Alan. Let's go to the very last hey, call. Boy. Thanks, buddy. All right. Last call. All right. Call. So this is the last one. By my record, Isaiah has beaten the caller two out of the five times. So the callers are beating Isaiah. Yeah. So Isaiah, you got your one chance to be better than the the last caller. I got to step yes. up my game. Step it up, buddy. Last uh, last <laughs> caller is in the room right now. All right, hi there. This is John Reap. If you can hear my voice, tell me your name. Area, Hello. Yes, area code six zero two. What is your name? Hello, my name is Daniel Hagbolari from Nigeria. Whoa, we got a guy from Nigeria? Yeah, yeah. Wow. And what's your name again? Is it Daniel? Yeah, Daniel. 
Daniel. Wow, Daniel from Nigeria. Thank you so much for calling in, man. How did you know about my show? Yo, I have you as a friend on Instagram. So I saw your video. Very good. Okay. Pick a number, Daniel, between 1 and 12. Number 1. Number 1. There you go. I like it. Ready? 1. Okay. There's this check. I'm going to open the check right now, Daniel. And I'll tell you what it's for. And then we'll have Isaiah guess. Ooh, here we go. This is for East Bound and Down on HBO Chapter 22, and it's for pay television. Isaiah, this is your last guess. How much is this check? $1.73. $1.73. Okay, Daniel from Nigeria, how much is this check? One thousand five hundred sixty. Wow, one thousand five hundred and sixty dollars. I like your optimism, Daniel, but the actual amount of this check is nineteen dollars and fifty nine cents, which makes Isaiah's guess closer than your guess, but. I'm not going to leave you empty-handed. You're still going to win an item from the mystery bag of merchandise. So all you got to do now, Daniel, Thank is so go to my website, carolinareaper.com, and click on Contact, and send me your mailing address, and I will get you an item from the mystery bag of merchandise, okay? I sorry, can I get inside the game? What did he say? Something about inside the game? Inside. The website again. He's what? What's the website again? Oh, yes. Uh, Carolina, like the state, Carolina. And then Reaper, like my last name. R sorry, I, I don't. Carolina. Sorry, I don't really get it very well. I can't hear you. What did he say? He doesn't get what? What did he say? I can't hear you very well. I can't hear you very well. It's cracking. Okay. Go to carolinareaper.com and send me an email. And I'll get you an item. Okay. Can Caroline you spell it for me, please? Are you a prince? Can you spell it for me? Can you spell it? Oh, uh, here's the website. C A R O. L I N A R E E P E R dot com. Carolina Reaper dot com. All right, no problem. Thanks, buddy. Thanks for calling in. Give me your uh, your uh, mailing address, and I'll send you some stuff in the mail. Okie dokie. All right. Thank okay. You. Thanks for calling in. That's it, everybody. That is how you play. How much <laughs> is this? Kudos gives it check. Woo -wee. Longest game. Almost the most costly game I've ever played. I gave away a lot of checks and prizes. And sometimes that happens on this game. You never know what's going to happen, right? When I, the iPhone decides to update during my damn show. All right. We got to wrap this one up, Isaiah. I, think, I, pr I appreciate you hanging in there with me, buddy. Oh, no problem. Um, did you have something for us with this day in history, or do you want to save it for another time? Yeah, I can share it. Or do you I have it in front of you, or do you have to get up and walk over there? Get up then we'll save it for there. another time. That's what we're going to do. All right, let's just wrap this one up, everybody. Um, don't forget to come see me on the road. On April the 16th, I'll be in Nashville, Tennessee at the Ryman Auditorium doing a show with Kid Rock, all right? So come see us, April 16th. Then on April the 20th, nope, that gig got canceled. April 26th and 27th, I'll be in Richmond, Virginia at the Funny Bone. Uh, May 3rd, 4th, and 5th, Myrtle Beach, South Carolina at the Wonders Theater, and more dates can be found at, you guessed it, 
carolinareaper.com. All right, that's it for this week. Thank you for watching, liking, commenting, subscribing, and sharing. Sharing is caring. Now's a perfect time to hit the share button. Don't just wad us up and throw us into the waste basket. Make a paper plane out of us and throw it to the next person. Till next time, I'm John Reap saying, bicycle. <laughs>